What up, players? It's Warboss Tap in his mug. Welcome back to my How to Paint a Creepy Nurse Servitor series. This is the final video. And we get started with Rhinox Hide, Abaddon Black, Corn Red, Blood for the Blood God, Ard Coat, Seraphim Sepia. Did I use anything else? I think that's it. I think I use a brass color though. Was it Rune Lord Brass maybe? For all the little cogs and stuff. So uh, here we are at the end of our last video. And we're going to start with Iron Breaker. And after the known oil has dried, the Iron Breaker is going to really, if, if you kind of dry brush it on, it's almost like a, creates a nice buffing and polished effect. We don't want this guy to have new looking equipment. We want to imagine that his little his creepy servo arms have been uh, in use for for lots for, for a long amount of time, many years. Uh, but we do want to create the effect that in between battle, they are buffed and maintained, so that even though they're like almost this ancient kind of uh, technology, that they are. They are adequately maintained as well enough as can be expected for the servitor to com continue doing his job. So, just buffing and polishing here. I don't have too much paint on my brush, you can see, so uh, if you wipe off most of your metallic paints and then do this, it's not really a dry brushing, but this kind of technique of just feathering the side of your brush tip over the model, then it'll create a nice uh, similar effect to dry brushing. Okay, now we're going to move on to Evil Sun Scarlet, and what this color is going to do is bring out the Imperial Eagle on his apron. Tricky again because I'm going to have to get in there while trying to hold it in focus and not get any paint on any of the little servo arms. It's like that game Operation, if you ever play that when you're a child. That game gave me a psychological complex. I hated getting zapped so much. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, this guy really reminds me of some really weird, macabre, um, those those horror movies from like the 90s that still use lots of practical makeup. And uh, I'm, I keep thinking of Hellraiser because that, that movie terrified me so much as a kid. Rune Lord Brass is what we're going to be using to highlight back up the gold areas. So we're going to take it from looking like a bronzed gold to this kind of a dulled down brass color which is a little bit more utilitarian looking and it makes it look a little bit more like non-decorative so even though we were looking to make these brackets and these cogs and different pieces stand out from the silver we don't want it to look like decoration this guy is very functional all of his little creepy spider arms serve a purpose and uh, he's not a, he's not a, a pretty uh, parade unit. Mornfang Brown next. He's not one of the guys that goes marching down the, the avenue of heroes after the battle. He's kind of just, you know, is there to do, to do one thing and that's basically like uh, to try and save who he can or who, his, uh, who the quartermaster tells him to save and to uh, euthanize whoever is too wounded to continue fighting so that the quartermaster can take their stuff and give it to the next recruit. Grimdark! The Mornfang Brown is our highlight color for the robes. If I wanted to get a little bit more uh, detailed and add a second highlight, I would go up to possibly a 
uh, Zandri dust. Very, very light, very light. Just to um, pop out that beige, off-white, creamy color. But again, we want to keep this guy as dark as possible so that the white of the apron and the, the blood spatter really is what draws your attention to the model. Okay, so now I decided to paint some of the extra blood plasma vials that he's got carrying on his back. So I'm starting with Mephiston Red, and whenever you paint vials or any kind of glass surface, you want to make sure that you go all the way around, because I've had some times where I try to paint some glass liquid in a vial, and uh, I forget to turn it to a certain angle so that it looks... Uh, it, it really ruins the effect if you turn the model a certain way and all of a sudden there's no liquid you want it to because it's a 3d model and not a two-dimensional painting or a picture you want to be able to look at it from all angles to make sure that the level of the plasma is uh, consistent evil sun scarlet so servitors are this thing that i haven't seen in much other science fiction but it's so prevalent in Warhammer and in uh, the Games Workshop universe for 40k that uh, they take these criminals or these people who who screwed up or failed or uh, have, have displeased their masters somehow and then they just they pop their heads open and they lobotomize them, they take out all the free will and all the higher functions of the brain and they replace them with uh, all, all these augmentics and things to uh, make them kind of very single purpose. Rust gray is now what we're going to do to highlight the glass of the vial, so we're going to be painting it on in short diagonal strokes to kind of show like a reflection of light. And um, so one servitor's task might be to only serve drinks at a party, not even food, uh, not to, to clear anything away, but just to walk around looking all fancy schmancy with a tray and uh, glasses of Amasek, which is, I guess, their version of wine. Okay, Mornfang Brown, again, to uh, clean up some, some, some pieces on this model. Another servitor's job might be to follow a tech priest or an engine seer and to um, only, you know, uh, follow his orders, but to normally only, you know, remove plates so that he can, so that he can work on it and then replace the plates when they're done. So there, there's not a lot that um, that you can do with a servitor and I think that's because in the fluff and the fiction there's a point in the Warhammer 40k universe where they the humans had given machinery just pure machinery artificial intelligence and it did not turn out so well there's this terrible war the details of which are lost to the sands of time and so now they say okay we cannot have any machine that thinks for itself what we can do, what we can do is take a human and recycle that human so we cut out all their brain functions and we cut off their arms and cut off like whatever we don't need, replace it with machinery and turn it into like a cyborg that just kind of follows one program. Grimdark. Alright, Lead Belcher is our next highlight, I believe. What are we painting Lead Belcher on? I think... Oh, yeah, hello. This guy's got a belt that I didn't even notice, and that's what the Mornfang Brown was for. It wraps around the front of his apron, and I decided to give him a silver clasp, as a gold clasp might have blended into the leather belt that he's wearing. Ceramite White is our next color, and this is just basically to uh, add another layer of paint onto the apron. I just had this idea of um, trying to convert up servitors. I think I might do something like that because the Games Workshop figures, eh, not so good. These, the carrying servitor, the scribe servitor, this Nurse Ratchet servitor, like they are fantastic models. And I wish there were better looking servitor models out there. So I'm going to try to do some lead belcher again. Why? I don't remember. Why did I? 
yeah, but I think you can get some pr pretty cool looking servitors out of maybe some uh, servile skulls uh, swapped into the heads of maybe some uh, Cadians in... Oh yeah, that's right, the buttons. In the Forge World books, the second Masterclass book, they show that some some servitors are converted using servile skulls and Elysian bodies, which is good because the Elysians are more realistically proportioned and the um, Cadians, for example, are, are very like heroically portioned, proportioned, which means that they're bigger, they're beefier, they uh, might not look good as servitors. Also because most Cadians are sculpted to be holding their las guns across their chest, so they would need to be given arm swaps as well. But I'll, dig I'll go digging around in my bits box. I know I've got some spare servile skulls that I ordered from uh, an eBay seller. And uh, we'll try to kit bash some cool looking servitors. Okay, Seraphim Sepia. This is an actually actually a, a tip that I found in uh, an old white dwarf that I was doing the uh, mortise engine for. Some of you might remember. Seraphim Sepia is not as brown as Agrax Earthshade, as dark brown. It actually has a little bit of a yellowish tinge to it. And what that does is it creates this really awesome, uh, like, oily kind of older look to machinery, especially silver. So it, it looks almost like corrosion, but uh, not quite as, as, as much of an effect as that. It's not rust, it's just uh, yellowed with age, which I think is fantastic for, for any kind of, oops, any kind of Warhammer 40k model of the Imperium. The whole concept of the Imperium of Man in 40k is that it's stagnating that uh, the, the height of our development as a species, intellectually, culturally, uh, militarily, maybe not militarily, but um, as a species, we were like in our golden age in the 30th millennium. So 10,000 years before the models are supposed to exist. And um, since the emperor, beloved by all, and the, pretty much the, the god of, of humanity, since he was removed from uh, from power and put on the golden throne. He, uh, the rest of the empire, uh, Imperium didn't know what to do. So they just like, okay, we're not inventing anything new. Progress and uh, ingenuity, creativity has led to us getting too big for our britches. And so what we're going to do is just keep everything that we have and try to rediscover what we've made. And so that's why you have these these creepy looking techno servitors that um, that look like they are a mix between kind of like steampunk and gothic looking things and it's just really really cool okay now we're adding the blood spatter and we're going with blood for the blood god and i am uh, sure that i have used entirely too much but when you it's like pringles once you pop you you can't stop you just got to keep adding more and more blood so uh, I'm starting with all the tools, especially hitting those needles and buzz saws. And I'm not just hitting the tools themselves, but I'm trying to get some on uh, the the upper areas of the tools and the servo arms because, you know, when you're cutting the blood sprays and you, you get it everywhere. And then I decided uh, we're, we're going to give his robe a little bit of spatter. And uh, I ended up going entirely too much. There, there's not any way for me to get Tamiya Clear Red up here. I've looked in like five or six shops so far and I have not found anyone that sells to me a clear red so it's a huge hole in my in my um, hobbying resource kit toolbox the reason why I to me a clear red would have been so good is because blood for the blood god looks like fresh blood spatter and what I wanted with this guy's apron was to look like it had been through some battles and I wanted it to look like streaky and, and like the blood had sunk in and kind of set and coagulated and clotted. And so I'm thinking about that right now as I'm painting this and uh, I just get carried away because I'm like, okay, there's gotta be more, it's gotta be darker. So I just keep going. I don't know when to stop. And I'm just spat, spat, spat. 
um, in order to create a, a more clotted, coagulated blood look, what I'm going to do now is mix Abaddon Black with Rhinox Hide and Blood for the Blood God. Oh no, no, not Blood for the Blood God, Corn Red. You're going to see me bring out my wet palette in just a second to kind of put the three colors on and mix them together. But uh, here we go. A black, like Abaddon Black, a dark red, which is corn red, and a dark brown. So I used Rhinox Hide, but you could also use Dryad Bark if you want. Rhinox Hide, I found, has a little bit more of a reddish tinge to it, so it's easier to mix into the concoction. And uh, apologies for the state of my wet palette, but I've been also using it to concurrently, while I'm filming this, also work on a commission's Imperial Fist Predator, and Imperial Fists are all about that yellow, so that's what this is. All about that yellow. <laughs> all about that yellow. Hello. Hello. Uh, spaghetti. <gasps> Ooh, spaghetti. I'll see you guys later. And I'm back. So you can see that the spatter on the apron was just a lot of random uh, brushing on with the dry brush to get as random of a effect as you can. You can also use the spatter effect by, I saw this in an old white dwarf, putting the paint onto the bristles of the toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and flicking it on. You can even do that with the dry brush, uh, as I've tried with one of my previous ogre videos, but uh, that didn't really work out too well for me so uh, I, I seem to like being able to just paint it on and again to me a clear red would have been a lot better a, a layer of gloss varnish art coat on the vial is going to make it shine and make it look more like uh, glass and not resin and here we go as I'm looking at the figure now I can see that it needs one more thing and I think that is to that's it, uh, paint a little bit of the spatter onto his mask. So uh, the lower right side of the gas mask, or his uh, rebreather, and a little bit onto the upper part of his apron. So he's really used to getting in there, getting dirty. And um, again though, having Tamiya Clear Red would, would really help, but still it's a pretty good effect. Blood for the Blood God has a nice glossy finish to it. And uh, I just decided to go whole hog and paint the uh, paint some blood spatter onto the part of the face which would have been stretched out over these tubing things all right thanks for watching everybody hope you enjoyed this second part on how to paint a death Corps of krieg quartermaster retinue servitor uh thanks for watching see you in the next one